Welcome back my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube. I am really excited about today's video and I'm glad that you decided to check it out because today I get to do something I love doing which is going back to a game I used to play many many years ago to see how it holds up here in 2019. So today we're gonna go back in time to a game that I used to play quite a bit back in 2016 and one that I actually honestly thought I had covered already here on the channel but when I went and looked it turns out I haven't yet before now, that is. So that is what we'll be doing today, and the name of this game is Mobfish Hunter. And just for some context here, by the way, it has been made by the Light Away and Crab War developer App Explorer. So I've covered both of those games previously on the channel, and I really love those games. Really well-made games. I like this developer so far, at least. But both of those games, though, are idle games, whereas Mobfish Hunter is more of a unique action fishing game where our goal is to catch mutated sea creatures and first of all can i just say by the way how well this art style has aged i think it's because of the cartoony art style and that makes it sort of almost evergreen because this game released back in 2014 but i still think it looks absolutely adorable i like the style i liked it back then and i definitely don't think it looks like a six-year-old game now what we're trying to do here by the way is avoid all fish we're just trying to get as far down at the moment as we can i'm just using my finger to swipe from side to side no we died already now i'm just gonna pay one premium currency which we've earned for free by the way but we'll get back to talking more about that to revive here now because i want to get a bit further down and i just wasn't paying attention carefully enough what i can also do is i can tap two fingers on the screen to use sort of a special burst uh, that allows me to fly through or destroy some fish and and avoid getting killed so i'll use that in emergency situations like this one for example that was very close we're doing a good job, and there we go. This is the max depth we can get down to now. So what's happening now is we're starting to move up again. And now, now is when we have to destroy these alien, almost alien at least, mutated fish creatures or whatever they are. So right now I'm swiping from side to side, just trying to catch as many of these as possible. And yes, this is not a normal fishing line. We're actually fishing here with a sea mine. And we'll go upgrade this one afterwards. And I'll show you guys all the crazy sea mines that we'll unlock later on and the ones that we've unlocked so far and actually that's also a brand new one that I want to show you guys so now we are just about getting to the very top yes there we go and we completed a quest as well which is awesome so now we get to choose one of five rewards we don't know what we're gonna get but I'm gonna pick the middle one and let's see we got 10,000 gold that's awesome so now we have 48,000 gold that gave us nearly 25% more and now a new daily quest has started we can earn premium currency from these quests, we can also earn normal in-game gold, and then we can spend that in-game gold on upgrading our, I was about to say fishing line, but once again, our sea mine. So for example, you start out with Spiker, and all Spiker does is that when it starts going up again, uh, once you've hit bottom or you've hit a fish, it shoots three spikes in all directions. A really good starting, uh, starting mine, by the way, but I'm using the boomerang though, which shoots two boomerangs to each side whenever we hit something, which is really useful, especially when there's lots of fish on the screen. We've also also got Moonblade though, attach a lethal spinning Moonblade to the sea mine. So I want to try this one out so I can click get here to buy that for the first time and now if we upgrade it we can increase the spinning radius, increase spinning speed and increase the blade size. Now what we can also upgrade are these utilities and these utilities over here they're independent of which sea mine we use and they're permanent upgrades. So uh, even if we switch out one of these sea mines in the future, we will still get the benefit of these utilities. Here we've got something that can increase the depth limit to 1300 meters. So before we got to the very bottom, which was 900 meters, might wanna go ahead and upgrade that one soon. We can also increase the amount of burst fuel we have. So burst is what we do when we tap two fingers on the screen at the same time to either burst uh, downwards for a bit, or when we're going up, by the way, it can slow us down for a bit so we have a better chance at catching more fish. And then the newly unlocked Torchlight lights 10 meters around the sea mine in all direction. Not sure that one's really useful, but I do want to increase the cyclone engine and I also want to try out this moon blade. So I'm going to save the rest of our gold until we find out if we actually want to continue using moon blade. Oh, by the way, actually talking about what has changed since I played this game back in 2016, this little guy here, Finny, 
is a new feature. So this one collects gold for us automatically. So I guess this is a retention mechanism. This is something that is intended to get us back into the game. But it's a nice little feature. We get 480 gold for free every once in a while. And then we also sometimes have a bonus chest where we can get a reward if we watch a video advertisement. So that's, of course, also a monetization mechanism. But it's also a nice way for us to get some more gold, get a free power up, get something cool that we need or that we could definitely use to progress fast in the game. So that's definitely uh, one new feature. It's also one of the only new things I really noticed in the game for the most part. It's the same good old game that still holds up, by the way. I still think this game very well holds up here in 2019. The core gameplay has, of course, remained pretty much the same. But now that I play this game in 2019, I can't help but feel that this game actually stands out just because it's so clearly made in a different age in mobile gaming. There's no gacha system, there's no loot boxes, there's nothing of all of this stuff we expect to see. There's no there's no cosmetics either, right? This is stuff we expect to see in newer mobile games, but we don't have that here. And I actually really appreciate that. This is more of a, a simple game from the past, from, you know, back in the time when we had Cut the Rope and, and Angry Birds and those types of games. Now, we do also have some one-time use consumables, they're power-ups, uh, we can only use them once, as the name kind of implies, they are a bit expensive right now, so for now, I, I tend not to use them, but I'll use one here just so you guys can see how it works. For example, this one here accelerates 150 meters down. Typically, you would only use these later on in the game when you have a lot more gold, because they do cost about... Well, typically a couple of thousand gold actually to buy just one of these. And again, they're consumables, so you can only use them once. So be careful, don't spend all of your gold on those consumables. And especially because progression isn't exactly fast in this game. Oh, that was the burst 150 meters down, that is so cool. But progression isn't fast, especially not in the early game, where typically you'll get only about... Well, honestly, only just like 50, maybe 200 gold per turn. And one of these consumables cost 4,000 gold. But then, of course, as you get a bit further, at this point already uh, in my playthrough of this game, we are getting, well, you know, typically 3,000, 4,000, maybe even five or 6,000 gold. And then every once in a while, when you complete a mission, as you guys saw before, we can get all the way up to 10,000 gold. Now, upgrading your sea mine also makes a huge difference. So make sure to do that. And then upgrading how far you can go down. Oh, I'm gonna spend one more premium currency here. Because <laughs> we keep dying. Upgrading how far you can go down also makes a big difference and we died again. Seriously, I thought. So the issue here was that I thought we had more fuel. So I was actually tapping two fingers on the screen in an attempt to avoid that fish. But I'd forgotten that we couldn't do that anymore. We keep going down and we got hit again. Seriously. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just gonna continue spending premium currency here. Uh, we have earned it for free after all. Uh, we can, of course, buy more of this free in-app purchases, but uh, I'll get back to talking more about the monetization in just a tiny, tiny bit. We've run out of gems now, so now we do actually have to buy more through in-app purchases for real-life money, or we can choose to, of course, just go up and and, uh, and do a new run, which is what I'm doing right now. But I want to get up, and then I want to show you guys the in-game shop, because I want to talk a bit about how this game monetizes. For now, let's just see how much gold we can actually get from this run, though. I hope we can get somewhere close to 3,000, maybe 4,000 gold. That would be great. Once we get to the point where we earn 5, 6, or 7, or even 8,000 gold per turn, it might make sense to start buying those uh, consumables, by the way, because at that point, if they can help us earn more gold, then it's definitely worth it. Let's see how much we got here. We got only 742 gold. <laughs> Wow, I guess that really just shows that you really do have to get to the very bottom of the sea because the fish down there are worth so much more gold, it seems. Now, we do have an option of watching an advertisement to get 50% more gold, but I just want to emphasize how little 50% more gold actually is. It's not a lot. We see many mobile games these days that give you three times, four times, maybe even ten times the rewards if you watch an advertisement. What this means for this game is that it's less of a pushy uh, option to watch an advertisement. You don't actually feel like you have to do it. It's there if you really want to. So if you did an amazing run, you might want to watch that advertisement, but it's not pushed very heavily, which I can certainly appreciate. But in addition to those incentivized video advertisements, the way Mobfish Hunter monetizes, I think, follows the same path as many other games has followed before it. Essentially, as the game's player base naturally decreases over time, the developers will add more advertisements in an attempt to maintain the same revenue. And I think that's what has happened with this game as well, because I definitely don't remember there being so many advertisements the last time I played it. It doesn't ruin the gameplay experience, but there's certainly more than I remembered. But to be fair, though, if we go in here to the premium shop, we can buy any in-app purchase, any of these top uh, three in-app purchases, and that's going to remove all the advertisements from the game. So I would suggest buying this one here, the Infinity Energy, because that's only two US dollars, and you'll then have no ads, 
and you'll have no energy system either. So at that point, you can just enjoy the game almost like a semi-premium game. Without buying that in-app purchase, we do have an energy system. So essentially, when we go in here to play around in the top left corner, you guys can see that we have three out of five energy left. But the good thing about this energy system, though, is that it only takes five minutes to recover one energy. So it really isn't that limiting, as running through five lives will definitely take longer than five minutes. So essentially, you, you have more like six, seven, maybe eight lives, and then you only have to wait five minutes. So if you just go play any other game or do anything in between, then you'll very quickly have earned all of your lives back again. It is still a life energy system, and I don't like these systems, but I feel like this is one of the better implementations of this type of monetization system, and also because you could just pay two US dollars, and then that will remove that energy system completely. So, quite happy with this monetization system. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below, though. I feel like this is way less heavily monetized than the vast majority of new mobile games, actually, if I'm being frank. Even just most mobile games in general, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if it's old or new. Most mobile games don't allow you to pay just two US dollars, and then enjoy the game almost as a premium experience. So as of right now in Mobfish Hunter, we are progressing from area to area trying to destroy all the mutated fish and then eventually we'll of course have completed all of that content and at that point the game kinda ends. Now this will take a very long time though so it's just fine you guys will be able to play this game for probably I don't know, maybe even hundreds of hours, so it's fine, but it would be awesome to see this game updated with more types of uh, different game modes. I do really like what the game has to offer as it is right now, though. It has a fun core gameplay loop and the additions you'd expect to see, like, for example, achievements, high scores, and progression, by the way, that syncs across devices. So even if you switch to a new device or if you switch from iOS to Android or the other way around, you will still be able to enjoy the same progress, which is very important in a game like this that is honestly pretty grindy. But that just about sums up Mob Fish Hunter for me at least. Let me know what you think about the game in the comment section down below. And we'll now continue then with the mobile gaming news of the day, which is that Madfinger Games, the developers of the Shadowgun games, great games by the way, they are cooking up a new game that could just turn out to be the Overwatch for mobile that so many of us have been looking forward to. The new game is called Shadowgun Wargame and it recently went into closed beta with a full launch expected later this year already. Now I've been following this game very closely for months at this point and I can't wait to see it release and to be able to share it with you guys. But let me know if you're equally as excited for Shadowgun Wargames by the way. It will be an online shooter so maybe we can even get to play a few matches together. That would be really awesome. Anyway, that was all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Be sure leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new around here and then until next time just keep gaming stay awesome and i'll see you guys around